Hi FlossTube, I'm Lori and welcome to Once Upon a Stitch. Today is Sunday, oh I've got to look at the date, August 14th, 2022. Um, it's a little overcast today. Uh, this is my second video on my new tablet, but it, it is my, I think it's 106th video. I think I marked it wrong here. I have to go back to the other book. I ran I ran out of papers where I, of sheets of paper where I write down all my notes and I started a new, a new book where um, I write my notes, keep me on track, fabrics in case I can't think of it when I'm showing it. So anyway, before I get into it all, welcome. Welcome to any new subscribers that may join us and welcome to everybody who comes and watches me every time I post a video. Now that I'm looking at it, it looks like something is poking out of the door. I think I was opening, I opened it and I looked for some threads and they might be hanging out of the door right now. So anyway, um, I still have to get used to looking at the camera over there because I just want to look straight ahead. But um, I'm a little nervous today. Um, I want to make sure I remember the steps in uploading the video and making sure that I share everything with you and tell you some exciting news that happened. And so let's get right into it. The first thing I forgot to share in my last video and it because it happened at retreat, I met one of my uh, viewers, Joanne, she's from Canada and um, she was so lovely to chat with and we went to um, we went out to the stores together, and so it was it was lovely that we had that time together. And she knew that I was going to be starting starting autumn by the Cricut collection, and she gave me um, some floss that it called for, and it's a silk in colors. And she says, um, "Don't get by it because it only needs a little bit, and I have some left over." So I said, "Wonderful, thank you." So thank you, Joanne. Um, and I shared, um, she was going to do Autumn in the Village and I had some Karen Water Lilies left over. So I gave that to her. So it was awesome to be able to do that with each other and to meet each other. Okay, um, somebody also asked um, about getting or finding out information about possibly um, going to the next New Jersey Floss Tube Retreat in 2023. And I had said that there was a Facebook page that um, you could join. And I think it's called NJ Floss Tube Retreat 2022. I know there's a closed group for the attendees, but I think there's one with for information. But I told them that if that wasn't the case, I would uh, look into it. And I spoke with Arlene Cohen, who hosted um, the retreat. And she said that the best thing to do would be to go to her Floss Tube channel, which I looked up. It's episode 71, where she posts a link where you, it's just asking you information, basically your name and email, I think. And then once um, the date is announced, um, I would, I don't know this for a fact, but I think she'll send out a message to the attendees who attended this year to see who would be interested. And then from there, once I think a payment might be due at a certain time, if they're not, if people haven't paid by then, she'll start going down a wait list. And she, maybe she'll talk about the wait list at some point. Okay, so um, I also, somebody reached out to me on initially on my Instagram and um, it was the Ben Q Lighting Company, and they asked me if I'd like to um, receive a, a lamp and to review it on my channel. So I said, okay. <laughs> so then we, we um, spoke with each other uh, through emails, and they sent me a long email uh, describing the light and everything, and they asked that I talk about it on my channel and to be honest about it. And to um, add any, the links below of where to view the lamp and if you're interested in it. So I said, okay, I would do that. So they sent it to me and I wanted to just, I took some pictures because 
I don't know how to um, insert pictures, but this is the box that it came in. And <laughs> people ask me about um, doing a video of like where I put my stitching stuff, display it in my living room. I says, my living room is a playroom. And you can see there's a tent there, there's toys all around, um, but there's this box and it's um, from Ben Q. And that's what the outside packaging looked like. And then once you opened it, it was um, this lamp and it's called the Genie E Reading Lamp by Ben Q. And what was nice about it, it has that loop at the top that you just lift it out of the box. Sometimes when a box is in a box, it's you have to figure out how you're going to get it out of the box without you know tipping it over and making it fall out. So that was nice. Then this was the second packaging that was in it. This is the base of the lamp down here with the pole up, whoops. And then the pieces were packed into that cardboard box. And then, it gave you um, a quick start information guide of how to put it together and um, very simple instructions. And the thing was that I wanted to do it. I didn't want Sal to do it. I mean, of course he could do it, but I want to see if I can do it. So I, I took out the two pieces <laughs> that it was, and it came with, I believe this is called an Allen wrench and two screws. And basically, here it is right here. Um, let's see, let me see if I can tilt you up a little bit. Okay. So basically, I don't wanna to touch it because I don't wanna turn it on yet, but this piece here had to be attached to this pole. So you, you slide it into this base and then the, the screw is right in here and then it, they send a cover to cover it. Then the wire is attached to the top. You leave a loop for it to be able to be moved up and down. And then it go, then it, you feed it inside the tube here so that it's not hanging from out there. You feed it inside down to the base. And then it's a very ample cord. Um, I have it pl plugged in, um, oh, about I don't know, four feet away from me. Um, and, and it sits right there. So that's the whole lamp. And what I like about this one, they make other lamps that have another piece like this and then an additional piece. I like this because it's compact. It is the gold color one. It comes in gold, silver, and blue. Um, they sent me the gold one, which I was very happy to get. And basically, I, have, I wrote notes down because I wanted to share them with you how I used it. So that was putting it together was very easy. And they said, you plug it in and all you do is you touch this silver section and the light turns on. Ta -da! Um, but I'm gonna share with you this way also. If you hold it, it turns orange. And the orange is the book reading mode. And then if you touch it again, it turns green, and that is for a screen reading. So um, it's not quite as bright, and you would have the light, and it, it, it moves, and it moves, this moves up and down. And you would have, oops, you would have it where your screen is in front of it. This would be slightly behind it, if I remember correctly. It explains it in the, um, let's see, place the lamp on the desk in front of the screen. So the screen is behind it. And you want it that it doesn't go into your eyesight. And then with the book reading mode, they say to push it back further and that it should be lower than your eyes. So I guess I would be reading here. Anyway, I have to, you know, work on the placement of it when doing the two things. And then it also, you can turn it and make it brighter. There's a wheel up here, which I think you can see in the, um, in the shot. There's a wheel here that turns it dimmer and brighter. Um, and 
So I've used it in my stitching spot, which is a, it's actually a TV stand, a portable TV stand that from years and years ago that we always, we throw nothing away in this house. Um, so my husband made it work so that it, it's like a snack table almost, and it, it's on wheels and this fits perfectly next to it. And then I have my pattern and then I stitch in hand, not in hand, but in a Q-snap. So this works beautifully there. Then I went, brought it to the living room and I put it on my side table and I sat like in the first seat of the couch. Perfect lighting, um, I was able to see wonderfully. And then I put it back on my snack table when we were doing a Zoom call. And that was the only light I had on in the room. And we Zoom it in the evenings, night, um, like from 7.30 to whenever we decide to um, call it at night. And um, I told them, they said, oh, are you in a different space, spot? for then where you usually sit? I says, no. I says, I just have this one light that I'm testing to see how it works. And they said, wow, you only have one light in there? It's throwing a lot of light. Um, and it re seems really good. I says, yeah, so far I'm really enjoying it. And then what else did I use it? Um, oh, I used it right here on this desk. I, um, when the grandchildren are sleeping and a lot of times I'll if I have a half hour, an hour, if they're napping and I stitch, I tried it here and I stitched um, with this light on and it was perfect. And the best thing that I, well, I don't know about the best thing, but one of the things that I really enjoy about this light is you can touch it and it's not hot. Um, the bulb does not get hot where in a, another type of lamp that I get have, once it's on for a while, um, the bulb gets really hot, it throws off heat. This does not, and especially with me, with my hot flashes, um, I really like this. The only, and that's uh, the only drawback for me um, is if I keep it on my snack table, the, when the grandkids come over, I clear the snack table. So it's something that I would have to move out of the way because I would not want this to be anywhere near them, even though it's a ba a solid base on the bottom that holds it still, I wouldn't want them playing with it or um, accidentally knocking it over. So that's the only thing that I would have to be aware of every time, every evening when I use this, I just need to put it aside um, and not leave it out when the, when the little ones are here until they learn. So. It comes with um, an instruction manual and it's very simple. I am really enjoy, and it comes with service information. I'm really enjoying it and I'm glad they selected me. So thank you, BenQ. Um, I will put this to great use. Um, so thank you from the bottom of my heart. And if anybody's interested, I'll put a couple of links in um, to them. Uh, you could also just Google them uh, ben, B-E-N, Q, capital Q, um, and it'll come right up and they'll have Amazon links. And um, it's not an inexpensive lamp, but I, I believe it's made well. I believe that um, if you're interested, you will probably use it quite a bit. Um, I, I know I will, and I most likely will be using it when I'm quilting as well. Alrighty, so I'm gonna turn this off because I have so much to put on the table that um, I don't want to knock it over or um, it be in the way and accidentally tumble down. Okay, so excuse me for a second. And, and of course this bothers me, so I will just, I will just tuck that in. <laughs> Okay, back to the show. What have I been stitching? Well, um, in no particular order, I had some new starts in August. The first one was an Erica Michaels um, Autumn Berries, and I decided to start with the Scarecrow. Now, in reading the pattern, of course I can't show the pattern, um, this section in here where it says, it actually says fall, y'all. 
um, the background color is not filled in. And I read through the instructions and it doesn't say what they filled in the background with. So I basically am going by what color does this look like in one of these leaves? And that's what the color that I will eventually fill that in with. Um, oops, slid off my lap. Um, so I started it on, this is a 28 count, I believe it's cream, uh, Lugana. So I finished everything from the Scarecrow up. And as you can see, happy fall, you all. And then it has this whirly gig. And then the, I guess, the banner. And I believe there's, yeah, there's a, oh, there's an acorn. It's hard to see here. It's an acorn and some more stitching here. So basically I have to finish this band and then the little motif on the bottom. And I will fill it in because um, I think it'll look pretty for fall. So I started that one. Then I started Hands on Design, Autumn Skies. And because it came with uh, this felt, wool felt, I think I'm going, I started with this pillow. And I stitched this on. Let's see, is there a tag on here to tell me what count it is? No. I think it's a 14 count, 16 count Platinum Ada. And I finished that one. And I held it up with the um, belt on. I'll just, I can't do both, but I'll do one. And it looks really pretty. I have them. And then it would be the bottom one across. Isn't that pretty? Oh, I love that. I hope to have that finished. Um, I don't know about the next video. They've got a lot going on right now. But um, before fall, <laughs> love to do that, finish that. Then I picked this up off the freebie table. And it's Luhu Stitches. I've never heard of this designer and I love the pattern. And this is the October Little Fall Fling. And this is done on a 28 count, just a piece of fabric I had left over, but it looked very similar to the color in the picture. And I finished it. And the best part about this is, for me, is if you see this fabric here, there it is. And I, I, I knew I had a piece of it, but I didn't realize how small of a piece I had left over. So I am, um, but it's enough for the bottom. It's more than enough. I don't think I would make it this large. Let's see if I can hold it up for you. Um, yeah, I don't think I would even use that width. I think it's too much for the pillow. I'll use part of it and um, I'll be able to finish this pillow. So I was very happy to get that done. The next new start is um, Christmas Letters by um, Primrose Cottage. And I'm stitching this on 28 count light taupe. Now this called for mushroom and I didn't have mushroom enough to fit this in. So I started it on a green, I think it was laurel, laurel green. And I didn't like the way it was looking. So that's why I took out light taupe. And this, I think I like it on this. Um, so that's how far I've gotten. So basically about half, 
and then I have that section. I think the colors really pop on this. So I was happy, because um, the other ones, they weren't, like even the white just didn't look right on it. So I'm glad I um, had another piece of fabric to work on that. Okay. Got a lot of stitching done, surprisingly so, for all the babysitting I did. <laughs> this past week I had both of them together. That was a bit much because of, only because their age difference, um, basically they're two years apart. So she's still a baby. She's gonna be one next week and Kayla's gonna be three. So she watched him a lot. And um, at times they fought over who was me holding them. Like if I was holding one, the other one wanted my attention. So it was, a, it was but I got through and it was fun and they need to see each other. Um, as as they progress in age too, it'll be good. Um, this is Leela Studio Spirit of Christmas set two. I was doing, I had started the out, I did the outline and I had said I was taking some of these snowflakes out and I was putting Caleb's name there and this would be his ornament for this year. So I stitched this on a 28 count country mocha and I completed it. So I'm very happy with that. And this is what it looked like here. And I stitched his name in the same color as the birds, which was Freedom by um, the Sampler Company. Oh, no, Sampler Company, Gast. G-A-S-T, Sampler, I don't know, Gast. <laughs> Gentle Arts, that's what it was, Gentle Arts. Freedom is the blue. So I have a lot of things that I should be finishing. And when I think about it, I, I, I don't know. I just feel like you either stitch or you finish. You can't do it all, though I try. <laughs> okay. Then I had another new start. And this is, this was, is lent to me by my friend, Teresa. And so I, I was thinking about this. If I just put two days a month in, um, I'm gonna have this pattern maybe like a year. And I really would like to give it back to her sooner than that. Um, but it's a lot of full coverage. It doesn't look it here, but it's, it's a lot of block coverage. And this is called um, Welcome Friends. And I haven't decided if I'm going to write welcome and then put sisters or maybe Layla and Libby's name in there or just leave it as welcome friends. I haven't decided, but I thought of the two little girls and um, since Rebecca and Mike are expecting twins, I thought this would be really cute in their room. Uh, but um, like that part, I think I'm just gonna leave that out for now and just continue working on the rest of it. And so what I was thinking is maybe I should, if I do what I'm thinking, it's gonna take stitching time away from other projects. But I was thinking of stitching it on like two days a month, but twice a month, like between each video until I get it done. What do you think of that idea? Would you get tired of seeing it? But I really would like to get it um, done and returned. So this is how far I've gotten. So basically, um, this is all stitched in, two colors and then the brown inside. And then um, this you really had to pay attention to, um, the border, because it doesn't go the same. It goes the same in one direction and then it changes in the other. So, um, so that's where I've gotten in the two days. And that's by, I don't know if I told you, it's Core e Batticore. Then I picked up, I had, um, I shared with you that I was going to be working on Prairie Schooler alphabet and um, doing the girls' names for Christmas ornaments. And I'm doing this on a 14 count Ada, so it's really big. <laughs> Even if it would have been on 28, I mean, I don't do anything smaller than a 28. 
So it would have had to be on a 16 or um, 16 or 18 count, but I don't know. I like it. This is Gianna's. So I put in two days and I got in the, so the three boxes, this box wasn't completely filled. I did the outlining at the, um, started for the six hours, six starts. And so I finished the inside of the three, finished the outside of this box, and then did these two, and then started the box for the A, which will be this angel again down here. So gingerbread, ice skates, angel, nutcracker, nutcracker, angel. So that was two days on that. Then I had picked up Kayla's ornament. So it's out of order the way I'm showing it to you. And then last night I picked this up again to start on the next um, grandchild. So I have another day of it today to put in another, another day on it. <laughs> so I started Libby. L, light, ice skate, bear. So another bear. And then Y. <sighs> why? Hmm. I don't know. It's a fireplace. Maybe it's Yule. Yule time. So it's a fireplace. I don't know if I'm showing it to you. The Y is down here. It's a fireplace with a, a, a log and some holly at the top. So maybe it's just for the Yule time of the year. So, um, so I'm doing blue, red, blue, red, blue, because the letters are different colors. But basically, they're blue, green, and red. So with uh, Gianna's, I did green, blue, red, and then green, blue, and then this will be red, the A again. So uh, I, I had to pay attention when I uh, decided I was going to start it. So I still have one more after that to do for Layla. And I was ironing this because I had it wrapped up in the Q-Snap because it's really big. And I don't know, my iron spit on it. So once I, here's the mark. If you can see this mark right here. So once I finish um, Gianna's name, I'll know how much of a border to cut, leave, and I'll just cut it off and then I will throw this in the wash and see if that comes out. If you, I don't know if you can see it. See, there it is. I don't know what happened. That's why I hate ironing in between projects because of things like that. When I have project stitched, I don't iron on it directly, which I did this time. Bad. Okay. So, um, so my plan, um, so I, I stitched, I started Welcome Friends, the one with the two little girls on National Cross Stitch Day. And then on, I believe it's August 24th, um, there, people are starting new starts in memory of Leanne, who was part of Lost in Floss. Barbara and Leanne used to do, uh, I'm sure you all know, um, floss tubes together and um, Leanne lost her battle uh, with breast cancer. But Barb has taken over the channel, not taken over, but she continued the channel and she put out that um, they're gonna have new starts and um, I will be starting a new start that day and it'll be the Prairie Schooler. Most likely, uh, the 2022 one. And I have this in a project bag made by Leah Fitzpatrick. And I got this at the second New Jersey retreat in 2019. Um, it was part of uh, the freebie exchange, the um, exchange that we did, Smalls Exchange. So then I had said that whenever I um, kit something, I would share it with you. So um, when I have empty project bags, I, every time I have an empty project bag, I'll kit it. I'll just put it in this. It's not going to be most likely not started this year, but I will kit them, put them in um, a shelf that I have on the side here. And those are the ones that I'll plan for 2023 of what to start 
and whenever. So the first one was what I bought at the last time I went to Needleworkers, and that is Blooming Basket by Carriage House Samplings. I shared this in my last video because I bought it then and it comes with, oh, nothing come with, I bought the uh, DMC Floss. It has, also has MPI, but I'm gonna do it on with DMC. And this is um, a 28 count, looks like cream, Lugana. So this now is kitted up. The next one I kitted up was a pattern that was shared with me. Here comes Santa Claus, Lizzie Kate, and I have a piece of 18 count platinum um, Ada. And then I've had this a while and it is Inverno. I don't know how you say it in Spanish, but in Italian, it's inverno, which means winter. So I did the um, fall one, autumn, autumn one, and this is from Satsuma Street, and I had gifted it to Michael and Rebecca, and they put it out every autumn. So um, I would like to get this one done. I think she'll like that too. And it's going to be done on white, 28 count, even we Lugana, and I have the call for DMC, and there's some variegated DMC. I had found one more, and I'm just missing one more. But um, one, two, three stitch has it. It I have it all queued up in my cart, so I just have to place the order today. I have some other stuff as well, um, and I do plan on placing the order today and share with you in my next video. So those are the three uh, projects that I kitted. And we'll add to my project kits. So I had said in my last video that I was going to do a giveaway and I am. So I'm showing you this because this is one of the giveaways. This is by Brenda Gervais. It's called Bobbing for Pumpkins. And I have no idea what I stitched this on. It's 28 count. It's 28 count Lugana. It could be mushroom. It's not, I, I um, framed this myself. So I, it's not museum glass. It's just a regular frame that I got. And I finished this in 2018. So number one will be bobbing for pumpkins. So all you have to do is let me know that you're interested in number one. And it's funny, I was clearing out books and, and not books, reading books, but books where I write in notes and things like that. And I found this. And what this is, is my giveaway rules so that I never forget to say them, but I always do. Um, you must be 18 years or older so that you can share your address with me. You have to be able to send me your address by either Instagram or email. Once the um, once the recipient is selected, I will try and find your name in the long list and put a comment on your comment, and then I will announce it on my next video. Who is the recipient of the giveaways? And then it's up to you to get in contact me with me. If you do not get in contact with me by the next time I do a video after that, um, I will repick from the list of people that put in for it. Okay, so today is the 14th. I will say this giveaway will end uh, midnight, the 20th of August, not midnight, 11.59 Saturday, August 20th, so that on Sunday, I can compile all the lists of who's interested in one, two, or three. So number one will be um, Brenda Gervais, Bobbing for Pumpkins, number one. Number two is Stitchy Stars by Lori Holt. 
I shared the finish on this in my last video. And number three is Needle Bling Designs, I Love You to the Beach and Back, which I've also shared, um, finished a couple of, I don't remember which video, but if you've been watching me, you've seen this finished in a pillow and it's downstairs in my beach section. Um, so that's number three. So, um, you know what? Let's make it number four. I'm gonna share this one. Uh, this is Luhu Stitches. And this is Little Fall Fling, number four. So we'll have four uh, giveaways. I didn't put the number on here, but I will as soon as um, I finish. <laughs> and I'll write it in my notes so that I know we're having four giveaways. You do not have to answer a question this time. I just couldn't think of one. Oh, that's it. My question is, what question would you like to hear me ask when I do a giveaway? So that would be fun to read the answers to. Okay, that's what, that's what the question will be. What is the question you would like to see answered? Okay, that's all I have about stitching. Now I'm gonna show some quilting stuff. If you're not interested, I get it. Um, you don't have to stick around, but thank you so much if you have up to now and if you continue to stick around. Um, I just wanna show you something that I thought of and I did it yesterday. And because I don't have enough room in here to cut fabric uh, for these little quilts that I made, I had to go up and down the stairs all day long. Every time I sew a seam, I had to, well, I measure fabric downstairs, cut it downstairs, come upstairs, sew it here, go in the other room, iron it, go back downstairs, put it, cut another piece. So it was up and down all day long. So what I decided was, the girls are going to, are either going to be born the end of November or the beginning of December. So to us, they're going to be a little bundle of Christmas cheer. So I said to myself, I want to make, and this I'm calling car seat quilts. When they're, when they are brought out of the hospital, the parents have to bring in the car seats. They have to be put into the car seats. So instead of just, I don't know, bundling them up in some blanket, I decided to make something for Christmas. Whether it's they come home in November or December, it's still the whole season of celebration for us. So I said, okay, let me put this behind something because I did it on scrap paper. I made, see how many blocks I wanted to make and I was gonna use five and a half inch charm squares. Then I says, I'll put a border on it, a thin border, and then I'll put a thicker border around it. And it should just be large enough for a car seat. So I had, I, I used, I have two of each of these. So I opened one of each and these are Moda. Home Sweet Home by Debbie Strain was one of the packages. And the other package I used was a Riley Blake design, uh, Farmhouse Christmas. So I take, this one doesn't have, has numbers, but this is nice because it shows the patterns that are included in here. So I took some of these and I took some of these and I made two little car seat um, quilts. So now I just have to get the backing, the batting, and then quilt them up. They're very similar but they're not identical. Okay, let me see which is the top here. Okay, this is the first one. Okay, I'll cover myself so you can see it all. And to have some semblance of something going on, I, these are like a green tinted block. This is a black and a black, a light and a light, and then a red and a red, just to have some kind of semblance of it not being totally scrappy. Then I, I did um, a thin border of candy canes and then a wider border of snowmen. So that's quilt number one. And quilt number two. Similar, but not identical. 
So this one is white, reds, and blacks going in this direction. And then the same candy cane border and snowmen border, uh, outside border. So, so that's what I've been working on um, since we were last together. And um, so that, oh, so what's gonna be happening the end, from now until the end of August? Well, next Saturday is Gianna's uh, first birthday. So we'll be um, celebrating over James and Amy's house. And this is um, August calendar. So I have teals and a little girl to represent Gianna with a G here and a little girl there. Then this is a summer hat, coffee to go. And to me, this is a beach blanket because Sal and I are going down the shore for a couple of days. <laughs> yeah, we're taking, um, well, this week is the last week that I watched uh, Gianna for Amy working at her camp. And um, so then next week I don't have Gianna, I just have Caleb at the end of the week. And um, Rebecca's mom took an extra day so that we can get it two nights and come back on that third day. So we're happy about getting away for two days, three days. And then um, I have a dermatologist appointment the following week, um, just for body check, make sure that none of my beauty marks are um, bad. And then, oh, and then on September 2nd, I have a stress test. Um, I don't think I shared with you. I went to a cardiologist and um, they found that I have a mitral valve prolapse, that the valves don't close properly. Instead of closing this way, it kind of closes like this. So that has to just be watched. And they're having me do this uh, stress test where you walk on the treadmill. Um, I don't know anything about it other than wear comfortable clothing, I guess sneakers, and um, I'll be walking for a while. It said it can be from an hour to two hours. Yeah, I'm totally out of shape. I don't know how I'm gonna get through this, but anyway, that's September 2nd. So I'll plan on doing the next video right after the test, like maybe the third, the fourth, or the fifth. That would be Labor Day weekend. And this, this way I'll, ha I'll have accumulated some stitching during that time. And um, I can't promise finishing because too much going on, but um, uh, I'll see what I can get done and definitely share it with you in the next video. So until next time, I hope you enjoyed what you've seen. I hope you come back. I hope you give me a thumbs up. And until next time, guys, love you. Bye.